Welcome back everyone. This is Design and Technology and we are on module 2 looking at the 3D world. This week's overview is to try and complete unit 2 looking at the 3D world but we are only going to focus on 2.1 to 2.6. 2.7 we will try and start that next week. 2.1 will focus on orthographic and perspective view. We're then going to look at the one point perspective, rules of perspective, points to remember, then the two point perspective, and then lastly three point perspective. So let's start looking at the orthographic and perspective views for this lesson. As you can see there are two images on your screen, orthographic image on the left side and perspective image on the right. The first image is an orthographic image is not real and is often used by engineers and draftsmen to show the specification of an object, the size, the shape and the measurements. With this orthographic image you cannot zoom in and out and you cannot tell the distance from the imagined camera. On the right side you will have the perspective image. This image is real. The way you look at this image from the camera's point of view will be the same as looking at it from your actual eyes. The further away you are from this image, the smaller the object becomes. You can zoom in and out from this perspective image and you can also tell the distance. Let's see the actual differences between these two images. On the left we have an orthographic view and on the right we have a perspective view. In an orthographic view, nothing changes in size, whether you see it from the front or the back. But whereas the perspective view, if you move yourself towards the building, the building becomes bigger. As soon as you move further away from the building, the building becomes smaller. So that's the main differences. Nothing changes in an orthographic view, but when it comes to the perspective view, you will see changes. We have two words here to focus on, vanishing point and the horizon line. The vanishing point is where lines converge to the single point, whereas the horizon line is a line that goes through the vanishing point. To make it easier for you to understand, I'll show you what I mean when I'm talking about vanishing point and horizon line. The vanishing point is the little red dot that I'm about to draw whereas the horizon line is the line that goes through this red dot for these two images we can specify the vanishing point and the horizon line for this image here at the bottom the vanishing point would be roughly at this point and you would have the horizon line going straight through it as I'm showing you right now. Whereas this picture, the horizon line will be a line that goes from here to here, but the vanishing point will definitely be somewhere here. Now, as you can see, the further away the object is from the vanishing point, the bigger it is. The closer it is to the vanishing point, the smaller the object is. Same thing here. The further away the object is from the vanishing point, the bigger the object is. The closer it is to the vanishing point, the smaller it becomes. We can use a one point perspective when we are drawing room interiors. Here is an example of a room interior on the left side which uses 3D drawings. The one on the right is a final illustration of the 3D room interior. This has been drawn by Amani Kagatin. You can draw all the photographs to identify vanishing points, horizon line and true shapes. As an example here, this painting has been done by the Emirati artist Abdul Qadir Al Reyes. Let's have a look at the rules of perspective. 
when we are focusing on one point perspective the viewers can see the object as their true shapes without any distortion they are drawn using horizontal and vertical lines when we speak about the vanishing point we know that objects converge towards this single vanishing point making them look like they are disappearing like I said before the closer you get to the vanishing point the smaller the object becomes when the object reaches the vanishing point it's as if it has completely disappeared the other thing we need to focus on is the word horizon line there is another word that resembles the word horizon line and that is eye level line from this picture here we're going to look at the rules of a perspective here is the eye view and here is the horizon line when you have an object above the horizon line we know that automatically this is a floating object if the object is below this horizon line we know that this is an object that will be on the ground if the object is not above or below then we can assume that this object can be directly seen through the vanishing point which will be most of the times in the middle of the horizon line so we need to understand that above the horizon line the object is floating whereas below the horizon line the object is on the ground we also have two things to remember when it comes to the rules of perspective orthogonal lines and transversal lines orthogonal lines are the lines that will direct you towards the vanishing point they will help you guide and make your 3d realistic transversal lines are the lines that helps you fix or create the 3d objects especially when it comes to the width and height here are some points to remember we know that this is the vanishing point and the line that goes through it is the horizontal line orthogonal lines like I mentioned in the previous slide are the lines that go towards or converge towards the vanishing point whereas the transversal lines are the lines that help you create the 3d object as you can see on the image on the right few points to remember there are some light lines and these are called construction lines these are lines also known as orthogonal lines that will help you guide towards the vanishing point the other one is the transversal which helps you create the actual 3d object again if the object is above the horizon line we know that this is a floating object whereas if it's below the horizon line this will be an object on the ground now we're going to move on to something called a two-point perspective now this two-point perspective is very similar to a one-point perspective but in this case we have two vanishing points as you can see the, the, the image on the right we have one point here and we have another point right here standing in the corner you'll be able to see the right side of the building and the left side of the building now we need to make sure that the vanishing points are far away from each other for example using this image we have a image where you can see the object or the building from the right side and the left side we also need to make sure that the views of the two-point perspective we have something called thick lines and thin lines the thick lines are the ones that will create the 3d object and the thin lines are the ones that will guide you to the vanishing point the bottom image explains the one-point view and the two-point view here for example you will have a one-point perspective where this street or city street will direct you straight to the vanishing point and you would have buildings on either side whereas the two-point perspective you'll be standing in a corner where you can see two views of the building the right side view and the left side view lastly we will focus on the three-point perspective 
The three point perspective is very similar to the other ones, two point perspective and one point perspective. But in this case, these are three vanishing points. A three point perspective is also known as multi points. A three point perspective, as an example on the image on the right, we have one vanishing point here, and another one further away, and another one closer to VP2. Three point perspective is used for more complex objects. In most cases, two vanishing points are on the far left and far right of the composition, and then the third point is below them. With a drawing like this, you will get something called a bird's eye view. We will have a vanishing point right here, and another one on the far right, and we could have another one on the top. So we have two sets of examples with the use of multi-point perspective. I'd like you to watch this video that will help you understand how to draw a one-point perspective. Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how to draw one-point perspective and we're going to draw three boxes using one-point perspective something to draw with. I think it's best to use a pencil. We will be erasing a lot of our lines today. And a ruler. I like these clear rulers because it's easier for me to see my dots. But even if you just have something straight, you know, that you can use to connect lines. And if you want to just eyeball it, that works too. First thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a horizon line across the middle of our paper. The horizon line is where the sky meets the land. For example, if this was our horizon line, this would be a road the road getting smaller as it goes to the mountains and the sun, right? And it's all coming to this one point, which is why this is one point perspective. So we're going to draw three boxes, one above our horizon line, on our horizon line, and below our horizon line. Before we draw the box, let's put in our vanishing point. I'm going to put an X. That is our vanishing point, so that's like this point here in this little drawing. This is where everything appears to come together. Now let's draw our boxes over here to start with. To draw a box, you just draw two vertical lines that go up and down and two horizontal lines that go from side to side. You're going to draw one above, on, and below. Maybe I'll make this one a little bit smaller. And the one below. So now we have these three squares and they're just floating here. We want to connect them to our vanishing point. I'm going to erase the horizon line in front of this one so it's a little bit easier to see. Grab your ruler and we're going to connect these three points of our top box to our vanishing point, making the side of this box first. And I would recommend drawing really lightly for this so we can see the side and the bottom. This isn't a box quite yet, it's more of a big long rectangle. So we're going to connect these two sides so we can only see the side of this box and we erase the horizon line. And then let's go ahead and draw the top of this box first by connecting this point and this point to our vanishing point. And then let's connect this bottom point. I guess I could call it a corner. Now if these were clear, then we could connect this line too. I'll do it on this top one. This was like a glass cube then we would see that corner as well. To keep it simple, we're just going to be drawing some solid boxes. What we want to do is figure out how big to make this box. You can make it as wide as you want. Just try to keep your lines vertical. When we end this box, this line needs to be parallel or running next to this line, so it needs to be vertical as well. We're going to have to redraw that line and we need that one to be horizontal. So let's go ahead and figure out, let's make this one about that wide and then I'm just trying to keep this line that I'm drawing parallel to that line right there. And this box, and let's add the top of this and the side of it. As you can see, we have these lines drawn, but it's still kind of hard to see our boxes, so I'm going to erase these lines. This is our horizon line. So we have our three boxes. So the box that's above us, we can see the bottom of it. The box that's in front of us, we can see the side of it and the front. And the box that's below us, we can see the top of it and the side and the front. Really quickly, this is a little bit more advanced if you want to try this out. I'm going to carve a hole through my box because I want to be able to see all the way through it. Now it just looks like maybe a square that I've drawn on the front of it, but now I want it to look 3D. I'm going to bring this corner 
back to the vanishing point. This point would go through it, and this point would go through it. We need to add this in here, because we need to add a line that's parallel to that line, and then another horizontal line here. Now we can kind of see through this box. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Click on the next link if you want to learn how to draw letters in one point perspective. And that's all for this week's lesson. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment, and share. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.